I think it's important that we recognize uh, the activities of people who are pushing our communities, our neighborhoods, our nations to not only remember, uh, but to appreciate what's important about these memories, what's significant, what was lost, and what we need to learn and what we need to gain. We are trying to change the narrative in the American South. Our landscape is littered with the iconography of the Confederacy. The architects and defenders of slavery are actually romanticized and celebrated. We have holidays dedicated to the memory of people who were perpetrators of some of these great atrocities. We haven't talked very much about slavery. We haven't talked about lynching. We don't talk about the Jim Crow and segregation that humiliated and marginalized so many. And so I think that has to change. And I've been really interested in trying to understand how do we change the narrative? How do we overcome this history of violence and, and bigotry and racism and destruction? And in that effort, I've been able to travel. And the most meaningful thing I did was I went to Germany. And my time in Berlin was transformational. I walked around the city and I encountered the stumbling stones, which disrupted the landscape in this really powerful way. It became clear to me that you can't go very far in Berlin without seeing symbols, signs, monuments, markers, memorials that are designed to make sure that we never forget what happened during that terrible time. And then I had the extraordinary experience in my walking around to encounter this simple but powerful wall of yellow bricks put together by children, it was the hopefulness of a generation of young people feeling the need to express their grief, their sorrow, but their hope that we never again tolerate the kind of bigotry and bias that gave rise to the Holocaust. And knowing that this yellow wall, and I like that it's yellow, it has the kind of energy of youth, it has the kind of hopefulness of youth to respond in their own unique way to the challenges created by this history, this past. And in many ways, it has been a source of inspiration for the work that we're now trying to do. We are trying to disrupt the landscape in the American South. We want to complicate these ideas that things were wonderful and glorious during the time of enslavement or lynching. And seeing the stumbling stones, seeing the stones has been one of the most meaningful influences in that work. We also decided to build the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, which is a six acre site dedicated to thousands of victims of lynching. It's the first comprehensive memorial to victims of lynching in America. And we name these thousands of people because for too long they've been unknown. They've never been remembered. And we tell a story about the weight of that era. And when you enter our memorial, the monuments, which are six feet tall, that replicate the human body in one way, they're rectangular, but they're also scarred and blemished. And we have the names of people organized by county. And you encounter them in the first quarter at eye level. We want you to have that intimacy. And I've been there. And I've seen uh, families that have come back to the American South to look for their loved one's name, and you see people embracing those monuments, and it's very powerful. And then in the second quarter, these uh, monuments begin to rise because this history still hovers over us. It shadows us. And when you get to the third quarter, you see all of these monuments suspended because the tragedy of this era was that those who perpetrated this violence didn't try to hide it. They didn't try to deny it. They actually lifted up these battered, bloody bodies to terrorize other people. They wanted to taunt and torment communities of color. And that left a real uh, injury. It created real anguish. And we want people to understand that. And then we have a wall that talks about the importance of remembering. And then we leave the square and we have duplicates of all of the monuments that are designed to urge each of these communities to engage in their own remembrance work. And we're actually now putting up markers and, and distributing monuments across the region so that in every county where there has been this history, there'll be some visible testament to the history. And for us, this community remembrance work is part of what we think is essential about how we change the narrative in America. Because I think if we can make the landscape complicit in creating a new relationship to our history, if we can get communities to understand the power of talking about this history, and most importantly, if we can create a new generation of young children, like the sixth graders that created that yellow brick wall, we can actually create a hope for the future that we will never again 
be governed by fear and anger. We will never again let bigotry and bias shape our thinking, our relationship to one another. So it's a great honor uh, to have some small role in acknowledging the work of all of you, uh, terrific advocates, activists, teachers, uh, citizens who are doing the great work that you're doing, but to congratulate you each for the remarkable work you've done and uh, this extraordinary night celebrating the Obermeyer Awards.